Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you all doing great. In this episode right here, I'm going to be showing you guys some techniques, uh, some refactoring techniques that I usually use uh, to clean up my controller code. Now, not everyone in the Rails community is a fan of this, um, but you know, I personally like it, and this is how I usually structure my controllers. Um, so take from this what you want. Um, you know, I'm just going to show you guys uh, what I do. Uh, so basically, right now, um, you know, we've written some tests based on the previous couple of episodes. I haven't gone and you know written the test for everything yet. I'll do that, you know, some other time. But basically, what I'm going to do here in this episode is um, write the you know the response like the way you know to re restructure our controller code just a tad to make things a little bit better. So if we take a look at this over here, we can see you know it says if contact uh, update and if contact destroy and you know and all that stuff and that's all good and fine. Um, but generally, um, you know there's a, a slightly cleaner way to write this and make it a little bit more readable. Um, so I'm going to show you guys for, for at least the, the creation, um, the contact creation over here, uh, and you know basically we're going to refactor this controller here. Um, so I'm going to go into the concerns and I'm going to create a new folder called v1 uh, and then basically another folder called uh, contacts controller. And here I'm going to create a file called response.rb uh, and then basically you're going to do module v1 and, and then module contacts controller and Actually, rename contacts response. Okay, so basically, what we want to do here is I'm going to write a, uh, a module, so a module response end, and then basically, I'm going to write uh, a little bit of code in here that I'm going to include into here. Um, so for example, you know, like doing this part here, like, you know, there's a lot of, there's some repetitive, like over here, it's like unprocessable entity. Um, you know, what if I change the way I, 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 I do unprocessable entity? Like what if I want to reply with an error or whatever later on, I would have to change it three times here. But, you know, using this, what we can do is, uh, we can write a method called, um, render invalid response something like this and then basically we can swap this uh, head unprocessable entity uh, and then basically here we're going to do extend active support concern uh, and then basically here I can write things like um, create and render contact and then here I can take the con we're gonna take one argument end and basically what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna do a contact dot save and render create status created and so basically instead of using a if um, So instead of using an if uh, statement, what we can do is now I can write something like this. So here uh, we're gonna do contact with save. So we can do create and render contact. And then we pass in the contact. And basically we're also gonna refactor this. We're not gonna use uh, instance variable anymore or render invalid response. And it's the same pattern, right? So if we use this render invalid response, so in other controllers, we're going to have the same pattern. So we know invalid response means, you know, it's it's some kind of error that we have to handle. Um, so basically the name, you'll see it's create and render. So here we're doing contact.save, which is a creation, and render contact. Simple enough, right? Um, and so basically uh, we also want to do the locals. Here, contact, contact. Uh, and so basically this kind of like, you know, will help us simplify a lot of, you know, it just it just makes things a little bit cleaner 
uh, in some respect. Um, you know, some people don't like this. I personally like it. Uh, and so I'm just going to keep things this way. Um, and if I do multiple things like create, render, and send an email or create, render, and trigger a background job or whatever, it all happens in here. You know, when this part starts to get complex, you know, you can really start to appreciate this kind of pattern. Um, so let's do the frozen... like that and we give it a bit of a response for contacts controller all right so uh, that keeps things pretty clean so now we have to make the um, the creation part here um, you know accept local variable as well so contact like that um, and then basically in here, uh, we can remove all of this code. So I personally feel that this is a little bit cleaner. Um, and you know, like it's everything is kind of like inside of here. So, uh, what we can do now is like now we refactored code, but we expect the behavior to be the same. So we have a test suite waiting for us. So rails test, and we'll know exactly if we mess up. And so, you know, if you're doing a lot and you can see here, we have an error here. It says, um, you know, create and render contact. Oh, so yeah, we didn't include the module. So what I'm doing is include v1 um, and then contacts response. So we're just including the response module for this contacts uh, in here, and the test is passing. So uh, you know, if if we're writing code and then we're you know we have the test to back everything up. And when we do, like, we're not afraid to refactor our code and change our code around. Like, we're not afraid to move things around, um, you know, like, because we know that we can, we always know if things break. And that's kind of like, the, you know, like, just driving home the point of having a uh, test suite. Uh, you know, like, we, we just did a refactor here. I forgot to do one thing. And, you know, when you're doing code, when you're coding, you have to do so many things that sometimes you forget to, like, include something or import something or whatever. You don't want that stuff. Like, if you just write code, and you don't even test and you push it out. Like, you know, you don't want that. Um, you don't want to push out buggy code. Uh, and so, you know, especially if things are really complex, uh, you know, you c you're more prone to making errors. Uh, and having a test suite, you know, allows us to confidently refactor our code. Now we can go ahead and, and do the same thing for the update and the destroy. So here we can do something like uh, the update and render contact and pass in the contact that is being modified. And then we can do something like contact.update. Um, and render update locals contact contact so um, let's take a look at the code over here so um, we basically we need to pass in the params as well so if we do this local variable um, here it's going to be slightly different so we need to do contact and params So update, and then we do a params. And that's pretty much that, and that should work. Um, so why don't we just go ahead and refactor this code here. So um, update and render contact, contact, contact params, uh, or render invalid response. So you can see that now we don't have to have multiple, um, you know, like keep writing the same invalid response. Like we have one invalid response and then we can use it over and over again. And if we ever change the behavior of invalid response, um, that's pretty much all we have to do. Like we just maybe maximum we pass in the contact object and then we return the error from whatever active record or whatever it is that's putting out the error. And we change the behavior once, and then we don't have to do it again. So uh, we don't have a test for this action just yet. And so here we can also go to the next line, and you can see that you know that took care of that very cleanly. So um, you know now, like I feel that this pattern is generally makes me a little bit happier. 
Um, so this is the pattern I'm keeping. So you know, we've, we've, now we don't know if the update action works. So um, chances are probably a good idea to go and write the test. So what I recommend is off the screen, you guys should go ahead uh, and write the test for your code. Um, and I think you know from here, uh, I think we've done enough in the server side. So we'll, we're going to take a look at um, you know what we can do on the client side. So now that we have um, you know user creation for the account, uh, you know I mean going over and refactoring all this code, um, you know to clean it all up would be very handy as well. Um, so, but yeah, I mean that can come all later. I just showed you guys a technique. You can implement it on your own or not. Up to you guys. Whatever makes you happy. Um, so from here, once we have the user sign up, we can detect if the user has an account or not uh, from the client. Uh, and then we can go ahead and allow the user to create an account. Um, you see, we're going to do the rest of the stuff uh, on the client side, which is in the React Foundation series. And if you're a member, you get access to everything. Um, so I want to wrap up this episode. I hope you guys found that useful. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and uh, thank you if you're already a member. If you're not a member, become a member. Uh, you know that's the only way we're keeping this whole process uh, running. Uh, and you know keep putting out the content that you know you guys uh, find useful uh, and and upskill yourselves with. So yeah, become a member uh, for just nine bucks a month. Uh, and with that, I want to wrap it up. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.